Today in our lineup, there's new hope for treating prostate cancer, the major breakthrough that could delay the disease. And people in Paradise, California are working to move on nearly a year after a wildfire destroyed their town. Who's left to rebuild and the challenges they're still facing? Well, bullying is a big issue online, especially on sites like Instagram. And now it's adding a new tool today to try to help. We're looking at how it works and who this might benefit. Thank you, Annie. I'm Amanda Starantino. Tonight, the search continues for an escaped inmate in central Indiana. The Marion County Sheriff's Office says 38-year-old Brian Wapner escaped from jail too through a window in the loading dock early Tuesday morning. He was injured in the escape and appeared to be actively bleeding when he went missing. He was originally arrested last March on several charges, including dealing meth and unlawful possession of a firearm by a serious violent felon. If you know where he is, call 911. Today marks one year since the murder of journalist and Indiana State University alumnus Jamal Khashoggi. He was killed after being lured to the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Now in his honor, the university is holding a candlelight vigil tonight to honor his courage and journalism advocacy. He graduated from ISU in 1983. The US intelligence community believes the Saudi government ordered Khashoggi's death for being openly critical of the country's crown prince. A candlelight vigil will also be held at the Royal Embassy in Washington, D.C. Tonight, a local police department is putting out a warning on a possible scam that might take you by surprise. So if you get a call from someone saying they're from the Greenwood Fire Department, use caution. The caller might say they represent Greenwood's fire prevention program and are selling ad space on an emergency car that will be handed out at events. Police say they are not affiliated with the Greenwood Fire Department and may be fraudulent. So take care if you get a call like that. And new today, an Indianapolis neighborhood is going to get millions of dollars in help to revitalize its street over the next three years. The Near East Side's 10th Street Corridor is now designed as the third Lift Indy neighborhood. That area will get an expected $3.5 million to help with economic development, preservation and development of affordable housing and more. One longtime business owner says he is excited about the turnaround for the East Side, which has not always seen the best days. I've seen the good, the bad, the ugly. It, for the most part, I would say uh, it been looked down upon because of all the crime that was going on and people were just disparaged about, you know, the conditions. It, it was pretty bad, and but now, like I said, with the lift Indy and all of the great things near doing, the Bonner Center doing, and Inglewood, the near side is looking up. Since 2017, the city has designated a new lift Indy area every year through a data-driven process. Well, it's been breezy today. Out of the southwest, the wind has been strong, gusting over 20 miles per hour. It will calm down a bit tonight. It looks like rain, doesn't it? Perhaps you'll see a shower this evening, but 90% of us will not. Don't get your hopes up too high. Temperature reached record levels again today, 89. The record, we hit 92, and we've settled to 91 for now. There's the strong wind uh, west-southwest at 16 miles per hour. Again, after sunset, we'll see that calm down. I just have to stare at the radar each time I check it because we get these little blips of color where we've had some showers pop up, at least for now, we're dry. These will be isolated showers. The more widespread rain is closer to the cold front and I think destined really to be in areas northern Indiana and southern lower Michigan. They'll have the better chance. But again, an isolated shower, maybe a rumble of thunder, temperature by 11 o'clock at 76. And don't think you'll wake up to a brand new feel in the morning. It will still be warm. We'll talk about the transition to the different feel coming up. Let's start the now news feed. Another potential problem for Boeing. The FAA now says there needs to be inspections on the wings of heavily used Boeing 737s. Investigators will be looking for cracking. The order comes after cracks were found on wings of 737-800s. Well, the USA swimming Olympic team to be investigated. Yep, the prosecutors are looking into claims that the group did not properly address sexual abuse claims. It also allegedly made hundreds of thousands of dollars from rebates from its own insurance company. And a police officer gunned down in the line of duty was laid to rest today. Sundeep Dhaliwal was shot and killed during a traffic stop last Friday. He was one of the first law enforcement officers in the U.S. to wear a turban on duty. Well, laws limiting gun access to people displaying potentially risky behavior are passing in more states. But new research suggests it might be worth going further. 
So the University of California Davis's violence prevention research program found a connection between alcohol, guns, and future violent crimes. Now they looked at people who bought guns in California in 2001. They found those with DUI convictions before buying a gun had nearly three times the risk of committing a future violent crime. 9% were later arrested for murder, rape, robbery, or aggravated assault. Now that's compared to only 2% of gun owners with no prior criminal history going on to commit a violent crime. Although the numbers are relatively small, one of the study's authors talked about why this could be the case. We know that alcohol use is associated with um, increased aggression through just direct um, effects. And then also alcohol use might be an indicator of an increased willingness to engage in harmful behavior. The Violence Prevention Program also plans to take the data and look at other trends in crimes committed after someone buys a gun. Other things, so just so that other things that we're looking at are um, drug related convictions, um, intimate partner violence related convictions, um, and then other nonviolent misdemeanors, because actually California has a violent misdemeanor prohibition in place already. California is considering restricting firearm access to people with multiple DUI convictions. Well, prostate cancer is one of the most common cancers among men. Ahead, how a new therapy could delay the progression of a particularly deadly phase of the disease. And Keller, right now. There are expected to be nearly 175,000 new prostate cancer cases in the U.S. this year. And now a breakthrough therapy could provide new hope. Usher Qureshi is looking into the landmark clinical trials. Physicians at Northwestern Medicine say a promising experimental therapy could change the way men with metastatic prostate cancer are treated. We think it's a big deal because it's the first time that we've been able to target uh, specific mutations in patients' tumors. Phase three clinical trials of the prescription drug Olaparib, a drug that has been used to treat ovarian cancer, indicate it is also effective in treating advanced prostate cancer when hormone therapy fails. The medication that was used um, interferes with the ability of cancer cells to repair their DNA. And they already have problems repairing their DNA. And so with this extra pill, we think that we're causing some of the cancer cells to die. In 2016, approximately 3.1 million men were living with prostate cancer in the U.S. Nearly 175,000 new cases are expected this year, resulting in nearly 32,000 deaths. Aside from certain skin cancers, prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in American men, and it's the second most common cause of cancer death in American men. According to the data, men who took the drug had a 71 1% lower risk of metastasis or death. They also had delayed cancer reappearance of almost two years. We think this is the type of data that could lead to approval of a new medication for prostate cancer. Researchers say they believe this approach to targeting the genetic makeup of the tumors could be the beginning of a new era in precision treatment for advanced prostate cancer. Reporting from Chicago, I'm Usher Qureshi. Sure, thank you. Well, back to our lineup. People in Paradise, California are working to move on nearly a year after a wildfire devastated their town. We're really pioneers. We're building a whole entire town from scratch. Ahead, where those efforts to rebuild stand. Our TV6 is working for you. Turning to the now news feed. If you have a medical device like a pacemaker or an insulin pump, listen up. The FDA says a number of devices could be vulnerable to hackers. Now, it's unclear how many are affected, but the FDA says you should talk to your doctor about any device you're using. Mixing bleach and citrus household cleaners could put people and pets at risk. The chemicals can create dangerous fumes when combined, but experts say to make sure you're properly airing out rooms when you clean. Well, if you're planning a vacation with TripAdvisor to places that have animals, you'll soon notice a change. The company is cutting ties with places that deal with captive whales and dolphins. TripAdvisor has made a commitment to improving the treatment of animals. Well, Chicago is taking steps to get more people 
into libraries. This week, the mayor announced the city will get rid of late fees. So the hope is that the change will increase the number of visitors because they won't be worried about financial penalties. Denver even made a similar move. We feel like fines um, prohibit people from accessing not only books, but our services. And it tends to, um, it, it really tends to impact people who are um, struggling. A Chicago library officials say 33% of card holders in one district can't check out items because of late fees. Well, the libraries also want visitors to know it's not just about getting books or movies could mean that a student is coming in and needs to put together a project for school. Um, it could be an older adult who is putting together a, a quilt for a family member. Um, we've got sewing machines, we've got 3D printers. Now you can find places near you that have eliminated late fees. The Urban Libraries Council created an interactive map. Just go to the council's website, look under member resources and click on the find free map. An update for you now, the escaped inmate we've been warning you about has been captured. The Marion County Sheriff's Office says Brian Wampner was captured this afternoon at Emerson and Connection Avenues on the city's southeast side. He will face additional charges for his, for his escape from jail to this week. Now with the holiday season approaching, many families will be buying home exercise equipment so they don't have to deal with a gym in the winter. But consumer reporter John Matteris has a caution about budget treadmills so you don't waste your money. Home fitness equipment is big business these days, but did you ever wonder why gym treadmills can cost $3,000 while a home treadmill can cost just $300? Well, one mom just found out. Sherry Kettner can't believe what happened to her four-month-old treadmill. Well, and the um, frame just snapped. While one of her sons was using it, the frame came apart. It hits the ground. Problem is, this was her second Gold's Gym treadmill, replacing one that also broke. Gold's Gym replaced it. And it was good for how long? Only had it for four months, and the same exact thing happened. The frame broke again. But Gold said the second broken one was on her. A warranty on a replacement was only 90 days, and I had this one for four months. Treadmills like these come with a lot of the same bells and whistles that you'll find in gym treadmills. But if you kind of tip them and move them around a little bit, you'll find they are a lot lighter. Gold's Gym Treadmills are the $400 budget line from Icon Fitness, which also makes Proform and top-rated Nordic Track. Treadmillreviews.net says Gold's Gym Treadmills are decent for walkers and light runners on a tight budget, but it does not recommend them for serious runners or sturdy athletes like Sherry's sons. Oh, four months, it's like, what is this frame made out of? Good news, after we contacted Icon Fitness, they agreed to replace her Gold's Treadmill with a better model. That way it won't turn into what so many cheap treadmills become. A big clothes hanger. Bottom line, inexpensive treadmills are fine for walking, and Gold's Gym models get good ratings for that. But for runners and more serious athletes, you may need to up your investments. You don't waste your money. I'm John Matteris for RTV6. And we've talked about this before. It's always cool to see. Notice the sun's rays kind of fanning out on the horizon there. Look up crepuscular rays. That's what those are called. They get a little break in there. And uh, beautiful sunshine peeking through the clouds that develop through the afternoon. Maybe an isolated shower. No record temp tomorrow. That's a headline for you. It'll break our string of days with record temperatures. We'll actually be below average as we get to Friday and our coolest morning in the short term Saturday. But that's not the coolest morning in the entire forecast. We've got several mornings where lows will be in the 40s. Right now, no real development of showers in central Indiana. We've had a couple of very isolated uh, showers that fade away quickly. The sustained rain is along the cold front that's to the north, but our chance comes overnight, especially in the northern third of the state. 87 in Muncie. Indy will be dropping here from 91 because of the cloud cover that you can see on our Weather, weather Now camera. 91 in Bloomington. For the evening hours, the wind that's been gusty will calm down. We'll see an isolated thunderstorm uh, late tonight, especially north of Indy. Temperatures stay warm overnight. Let's talk about the overnight hours. 11.30, not much there, but I'll stop this about 3 in the morning, and you can see the expansion of showers and thunderstorms, but really confined, say, between Peru and South Bend. Those slide off to the east in the morning. I'd put our chance of any showers first thing in the morning, just 20%. Still warm. 
really for overnight lows and then afternoon temperature at 82 when you really feel the difference is unveiled in the four day forecast. We're back in paradise today, nearly a year after the town was impacted by California's biggest and most deadly wildfire ever. Kai Beach has seen how the recovery is going. The first time I drove through paradise, uh, it, my impression was it looked more like a bomb went off or a war zone than like a fire went through. This is Paradise. Paradise, California. Literally being rebuilt from the ashes. House after house, neighborhood after neighborhood, just burned to the ground. A little more than 10 months ago, this small northern California city saw the state's biggest and most deadly wildfire ever. November 8th is, is a day that uh, nobody around here will ever forget. Rick Carhart of Cal Fire Butte County says it cost more than $93 million to fight this inferno, which was named the Camp Fire. There are a lot of raw emotions and feelings even among our firefighters. And after firefighters put out the last flames, the Camp Fire claimed 86 lives and destroyed more than 13,000 houses, including the home of the town mayor. It's a sick feeling. It really is. After her house went up in flames, Paradise Mayor Jody Jones is now building a new one. What's your thoughts when you see the rebuild happening? It's an arduous process to rebuild. We're really pioneers. We're building the whole entire town from scratch. Despite tens of millions of dollars coming in from state and federal funding, some in this town still don't have enough money to rebuild. Before we used to play it month by month, now we play it kind of day by day. Jonathan Valdez is now living in this RV after his house burned down on the neighboring lot. Yeah, that was a two-story house right next door, actually. We were there for about eight years. Valdez and his family now pay $600 a month just in gas to keep these generators running for electricity. At times, you know, at times it's rough, but we just definitely got to make the best of it. Sparked by power lines and fueled by high winds and dry conditions, the campfire spread fast. Burning down areas the size of football fields in just a few moments. All right, good. At Paradise High School, students, staff, and the community are starting the healing process through sports. Nino, what are you going to do with the backs? More than 5,000 people came out to watch the Bobcats play their first game since the fire, which head coach Rick Prince says is an amazing number for this town that lost 90% of its 26,000 residents. And although many people have left and had to live somewhere else, it says a lot that so many would come back and participate in that one event. From football season to now a new fire season, people of Paradise are moving on, as painful as it may be. This is a good town, good people here. Saying this is a new paradise. This is Paradise Strong. This is still my home. I'm Kai Beach reporting. Kai, thank you. Well, consumer groups are highlighting an issue that could cause you even more hardship during a painful experience, the death of a loved one. The Funeral Consumers Alliance, in part with other groups, looked to see if California funeral homes were posting their prices online. They're the only state that requires it. So a little less than half had prices online that were easy to find. About a quarter had prices listed, but they weren't easy to find. And then about another quarter didn't have them posted at all because of a loophole. But nationwide, only about 25% post prices online. The concern is if you can't easily shop around, you could end up overpaying. So the groups say if you compare prices from five or six funeral homes for a simple cremation, you could find a difference between $900 and more than $3,000. They also caution against prepaying for services. You might die while you're vacationing in Florida. You may change your mind on what you want. Your burial or cremation plans may not be possible or practical 20 years down the road the way they seemed when you prepaid for it. And if you have not prepared your children to be able to make those decisions, you have not actually done funeral planning. All you've done is to give your hard earned money to another business to play with until you die. 
The Federal Trade Commission is supposed to be considering amending the funeral home pricing rule to include online pricing requirements. Right now, homes have to give it to you either in writing or over the phone. Well, next in our lineup, bullying is a big issue online, especially on sites like Instagram. So we're looking into the new tool it's adding today to try to help.